Hello everyone, Mike Bentley here, Carolina Crossroads RV Park. And I wanted to do a short video just giving you an update on where we are on the build of the RV park. And then give you some do's and don'ts of what to do and what not to do when you're developing an RV park like I'm doing. What I'm hoping to do is show you things that could go wrong with the park, things that are going wrong with the park. And at the end of the day, teach you those things through these videos so you don't make the mistakes that I possibly possibly could have made or do make. Because at the end of the day, mistake is money. If you kind of look at it that way, hey, I made a mistake, that mistake just cost me money. So some mistakes are a little bit of money, some mistakes are a lot of money. So today, um, this video like I said, is giving you an update. So we had the pre-con meeting last week. And what the pre-con meeting is, it, it, it's pre-construction. We had a pre-construction meeting and the site engineer, uh, the county inspector, we got to meet one of our county inspectors, the grader, me as the developer, and several other, several, several other subcontractors met out here. And we just kind of went over the drawings and went over how we're going to start and what things are going to look like what the county expects out of the grading process because they don't want mud on the roads they don't want mud going in other people's property so you have to put silk fencing in and they have all these regulations that you have to follow and they want to make sure that's why they have the county inspector out here they want to make sure that you're going to follow those regulations to the t it's super important because if you don't your neighbors will complain and they're going to blow the, the inspector's phone up and at the end of the day they're, they're just going to be mad at you because you're the developer it's your responsibility the second half of this video is the mistake the do's and don'ts so this is going to be a contract video and what i want you to see out of this video is when you're developing anything but in this case an rv park you want to make sure as you make agreements with all your subcontractors that your contracts that's your agreement your contract with that subcontractor is very well thought out so i own a heating and air company that's my day job i'm building this rv park really for retirement but i enjoy doing this stuff so i'm i'm having fun as i do it but one thing I know really good because of my day job is contracts. In the heat and air world, I'm doing contracts every single day, two or three times a day, reading, writing contracts, signing contracts with customers. So I've gotten over 20 years pretty, pretty good at it. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I, I know what a good contract looks like. So moving on, when I did the contract with the company that's clearing the property so i have 13 and a half acres here and i put in the contract what i done was i went and talked to my grader i knew who that was at the time and i went and talked to him i said hey what exactly do you want this piece of property to look like when that clearing company is gone and he was clear about two things he said mike we need to have all the stumps off the property so when we take on the plans it show us it shows us moving two feet of dirt on this property and we're dropping the property and then we're raising it back up but we got to remove all the topsoil put it over to the side we got to get the good dirt bring it up shape it how we want to with the pads and to do all that that means of course the property has to be cleared properly but the stumps in the ground since we're since we're going two feet into the ground from the start the stumps need to be removed so when you look at the site when you look at the site no trees are here i mean it looks really good N no problem looks nice and clear a second thing the second thing the grader said he was like hey i need all the stumps removed and then i need to make sure all the mulch most of the mulch is gone because on this particular piece of property I'm building some embankments so when I build my sites and shape and level my sites I've got some some hills to do that with well what we'll do is we'll take our topsoil 
and we'll build them hills out of it. But as you see, all the mulch on the ground here is going to be mixed in my topsoil. So what that's going to do is over time, this mulch will break down and it will leave voids in the topsoil, which will make that nice pretty hill that I have that's seeded over a few years, I'll have indentions in it. It'll be hard to maintain because, the, because all this mulch is breaking down. It's just going to cause me a problem you know five ten years in the future that i'm going to have to fix and take care of so of course we don't want to have to do that so i put in the contract hey all the topsoil has to be nice and clean so that means all the mulch needs to be removed so they are in the process right now of removing the mulch but i made sure i put that in my contract because that's super important because these these clearing companies, they don't always remove mulch. What they do is they'll cut that tree down or they'll use a mulcher and they'll just grind that tree up, blow the mulch, kind of spread it over the property, and basically they're done. They move on to the next section or the next acreage. But in this case, we need the, all the mulch gone, so that's in the contract. I made sure that was there. That's a big deal. Moving all this mulch and taking all this mulch off of the property uh, is a really huge undertaking. And it actually costs a pretty good bit of money because this mulch has to go somewhere. Somebody has to take it. You can't really resell it. You could probably take it to a mulching company and try to resell it if you have that type of contact. But in this case, we don't. We have a landfill that's not too far away but they charge $50 a ton and we've got tons and tons of mulch that's going to be on this property. The second big thing and one of the biggest things is the stumps. So when you're looking at this property, you don't really see that many stumps, especially on this side. I mean, it looks really good, but they are out there. They, they haven't de-stumped this. And I'm going to walk up to this area and what I've done is I took a little bit of time yesterday before I made this video and I marked all the stumps on just uh, two or three acres of the property just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about, how these stumps are hidden in the property because they just kind of grinded them down and moved on. Well, obviously, that's not what the grader wants. He's wanting to remove two foot of this property and he doesn't want to have to de-stump everything. So I hope you can see it on camera. Um, I went to Lowe's got a whole bunch of flags all they had was yellow and if you see all these flags all over the site here yeah that's stumps so if it's not in your contract to remove all these stumps and it's not in writing well that's a problem because they're what they're going to do is they're going to say absolutely mr bentley i'll be happy to remove those stumps for you at a cost and so you didn't talk about that in the beginning of your contract and you didn't do the necessary steps to put everything in your contract you let your contract be vague or or uh, you know as a as a handshake saying hey this is what we're going to do no that's not the world we live in anymore i wish that was my father's world that was my grandfather's world but unfortunately that's not the world we live in today so everything needs to be done in writing it needs to be very detailed i know you understand the contract because you're the one sitting down making the contract with the contractor but what you got to make sure is that everybody understands the contract that a person that has never seen that contract has never sat in a meeting with you discussing the property or whatever that contract is they understand the contract that it's all in black and white very clear because you don't ever want to have to do this but if you ever had to go to court or a contractor decided to put a judgment on you well you want to make sure you got everything in writing clear in black and white very easy to understand understand for anybody a layman somebody who doesn't read contracts for a living they can understand exactly what that contract means, exactly what that person was supposed to do if you ever have to go through lit litigation and you can just move on and, and continue the process. So today, like I said, just a quick update. 
we had our pre-con meeting last week had all the had the inspectors subcontractors here going over the project and the the cleaning the guys that are doing the clearing of the property they were on vacation last week and that's good for them everybody deserves a vacation so that's why it's kind of pushed us back a little bit we was hoping to start the grading process last week and but it is in my contract for all the mulch to be removed off the site and it is in the contract that all the stumps to be removed also so when the grading contractor comes in here it's nice and clean for him he's ready to do his job and he can get it done in the amount of time that he planned on doing it which in my case <clears throat> is about 45 days my grading contractor says that he can probably be pretty much finished in 45 days so after that 45 days the next step will be electrical plumbing and i'm excited to show you guys that and of course i'll show you videos of them out here grading but as things come up problems mistakes remember st mistakes are money and as things come up i want to show you these videos hopefully it will help you out um, so you're not making the mistakes or potential mistakes that um, that I would make to cost me money. Have a good day.